All right, so continuing, this is what we've got so far. We've created one post. Now we're going to see in contrast in a moment what a page is. Question? Well, on that test, mm -hmm. how can we capitalize it on, on the post page? That again depends on the theme. The theme is taking whatever title we write and automatically making it all caps. So that depends on the theme. And uh, sometimes, depending on the theme, we can edit that pretty easily, saying don't make all caps. Okay. And sometimes the theme is complicated and we have to write code. Uh, okay. right. But it, no, that's okay. So we're going to see, many times my answer is going to be, it depends on the theme. Because it does. So that's why we're all kind of using the boring theme at the moment, because then when you start to use your own theme, you'll have many more questions. But here, at least, perhaps we can handle it with this one that we're all using. Uh, so we've got one blog post. Um, let's actually make one more blog post, and then we'll make a page. Uh, so I want to I wanna make a new blog post. Now, here's the cool thing. Uh, you, you'll have this, this navigation bar at the very top all the time. And remember, this is the one that you can go back to the dashboard. But take a moment to look at it. But if I'm on visit site, and I look up here, I have dashboard or jump directly to menus or whatever. I can jump to different sections quickly. What I also have always at the top is a new button. So I can quickly create a new post or page. So I don't have to always go back to dashboard and then posts and then new. I always have the option at the top here of new. So wherever you're at, go to new and select post. We'll do a post one more time. On this new post, again, Victor's Bakery, let's say <clears throat> that uh, on a regular basis I publish a, a feature on a specific uh, cake or pie. So when you, if you take my blogging class, I'll talk about there that basically every site can have a blog. You might think, yeah, a site where you review products, yeah, that can have a blog, makes sense. A site where I do something, like I, I have an event, I could blog about that. But what about my site? I'm a, I'm a realtor. What could I possibly blog about? I'm selling houses. There's many things you could do. You could write on a regular basis success stories. This family that you helped get this property, and it turned out well, you blog about them. This other success story about being able to secure the home loan you know, success stories about what you've accomplished help you because you're creating blog content on a regular basis, which the search engines like. They want your site to be updated on a regular basis, not six months ago, 12 months ago, 18 months ago, six months ago or so, a week ago, even better. Not everyone will be able to create content that fast, but at least you'll have content that you could create. Um, so my bakery. Okay, what am I going to even write about? As I said, I'm going to feature every month a, a new post on a particular cake or pie. Uh, so what I'm going to do here on new post, I'll call this um, pie of the month. And then I'll write here, pecan pie. And then I'll set the pie here to be heading number one. Again, a hierarchy. I have that, for example, in all the handouts that I give you. There's divisions within the handouts uh, so that you can quickly jump to these different sections. Again, if you didn't get a chance to print, you can do it during the next break. Uh, but uh, I've got a, now a little division here, a heading number one of pecan pie on the next line. Then it should switch back to paragraph, so I'll write a regular paragraph and I'll say uh, for the month of um, uh, October, we're featuring our famous pecan pie.
And then as much as you want to write, notice what I'm also doing here. Um, that was heading one, the name of this particular pi, maybe write a little bit. And then I've got another one, this is a heading two, second divided, and then some more text. So more text. And everyone, remember to mute your devices, please. If you need to get texts, put that on uh, vibrate, please. Uh, so again, we've got some text. We've got some. We've got a heading one, a heading two. Okay, we've seen this before. Uh, let's see about adding a picture. So on the next line over here, I'm going to press enter. I need a picture, and we've got a couple of options. One is that if we've got already a picture on our computer, we simply upload it. The other way is if we have a link to the picture, we can attach the link. So what we'll do is we're going to upload a picture that already exists on our computer. It's not a picture of a pecan pie, but it's a picture that we all have on our computer. So whatever you've got written here, uh, press enter to go to the end. Wherever, wherever our little cursor is at and we click add image, that's where it will show up. So if I want a picture of before history, I need to click there. I want the picture at the end here, so click at the end. And we'll click at the top where we've got add media. Click add media. We get this screen with a variety of options. If we know the address to our picture, we can type insert from URL. I don't know the picture address, so I won't. Uh, we've got the options here of upload or media library. So if I've already got 10 pictures that I've uploaded, they're all going to be listed in the media library. I don't have any. And upload obviously make, means I upload. Uh, I'm in the insert, so wherever I've clicked is where the picture will be added. I can also set the featured image here, but I, I won't at the moment. And I can create a gallery. This is also cool. Let's say I have five pictures of, these, of this pecan pie. So I can select all five of them and create a gallery. <coughs> WordPress will create a gallery for us so we can go from picture to picture to picture. That's more complicated, but uh, under Insert Media here, make sure you're under Upload Files, and we'll select Select Files. It should pop open with a new screen. And these computers automatically have a few sample pictures saved into, this, into the Pictures folder here. So this new screen, go to Pictures. Go to Pictures and then go to Sample Pictures. Double click Sample Pictures and whichever one of these uh, you might think is the closest to what we're writing about will select. None of them really fit, but I'm gonna say uh, I'm gonna select that Hydrangea. I'm gonna click it and then select Open. It's going to upload it. Once you've uploaded it, you'll see on the right side various options. Title, caption, alt text, description. It's a good idea to fill all of these out because, again, it also helps your SEO. WordPress gives you many ways to help your SEO. You should take advantage of them. Most of them are simply filling out something or selecting something. So title, that's the name that will appear. Once you've uploaded 20 pictures and you want to find them, title is a way to find it. Caption is the text that will appear below the picture. Once we actually insert the picture and we want a little text below the picture, it's caption. So I'm just going to make something up here. Our secret ingredient.
alt text. This is the alternative text. Now, believe it or not, but people that visit a website that are completely blind can still browse a website. And you think, well, this is such a visual thing. How will they know where to click? Well, people that have a visual impairment oftentimes have a computer that will read the screen to them. So they'll be hearing uh, nav bar, go home, go shop, go contact. And then they'll know on the keyboard, because they have the keyboard memorized, where, where to click to click on go shop. So a person that is completely blind could be just fine on a website. Uh, this is one way to help them as well. Alt text. This is a simple description of the picture that no one will see unless the people that need to know about it. So this doesn't appear on screen. But if I'm blind and the computer is reading to me, it'll get to this picture and read whatever I write there. So it's a good idea to fill this out for people that need it. It's also good to fill out because modern web design practices emphasize this, that all your pictures should have alt text that describe the picture. Because computers are not quite smart enough yet to look at a picture and analyze what's in it. Perhaps Google can analyze this picture and see that is probably a flower. But how will it know that it's a hydrangea or a poncetia or whatever? unless we mark it here. And how would it even know that your family photo includes Uncle Joe and Uncle Bob and Aunt Sally, unless you write it in the alt text? So oftentimes an alt text can be the same caption text, especially if it's descriptive. Now, for the visual people, our secret ingredient is enough. They will see the flower, they'll get the joke. For the blind people, I'm going to say our secret ingredient, and then whatever the picture is, hydrangea is, because they cannot see it. They're relying on what we've written here. So think about this if you're selling a product. Don't you want everyone to be able to buy your product? If someone is blind that goes to your website and it just says, picture, 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 buy now, what are they buying? So if it, if it says, uh, you know, buy now, women's shirt, uh, pink, uh, buy now, then they'll know what to buy. Description is text that does not appear in the in the visual part of the website. It appears, again, when we've got 20 pictures, 200 pictures, it's going to be hard to find the picture that we've worked with. So uh, if we add a description to the picture, it makes it easier for us to find. Uh, in my case, the title is the same as the description, so that's what I'll write. I've got options then for display settings, alignment, none, or I can select put it to the left, the right, or the center. If I know CSS, I have more control. I won't change that. We have link to media file. This is related to size. At the moment, at the top here, it says that my picture is 1,000 pixels by 768. Relatively large picture. But then at the bottom it says we're going to display it as a medium size, 300 by 225. So perhaps this picture looks really well, a little larger, so you have those options of changing size down to a thumbnail or up to full size. Well, if I do full size, maybe that's too big. So what we could do is have it on th medium or thumbnail. And then link to is if a person chooses to click on it, then show me the original size. That's the link to the media file. If I don't want people to click on the picture to show a larger version, I can say none don't make it clickable. If I want people to click on it and instead go to the page where this is attached, I can do that. That'll make sense a little later. Or custom URL. If, I, if people click on it, I could then have them go over to um, whatever, Amazon.com. So see, that's what the link to is. What happens when a person clicks on the picture? 
I'm going to leave mine as is, media file. And then insert into post. There it is at the bottom. I'll take a moment to add categories and tags. This doesn't fit into the announcements. I don't want to put it in uncategorized. I want a new category. Um, this is um, this is a couple of things off the top of my head. This is going to be my monthly uh, post on, um, on, on pies. I'm doing a series on pies, the pie of the month, or whatever I called it the pie of the month. So I can create a category called the pie of the month. That's what I'll do. Add new category, pie of the month. So that way when I, later on when I add my, um, what are the pies? Key lime pie, shoe fly, shoe fly pie. When I've added all my types of pies, someone can easily click on um, pie of the month and show them all. Remember to type it and click the button, add new category, it should highlight. The second thing is I want to uh, work with tags. As I start to add tags and use tags, then this is pretty useful here choose from the most used tags. This will show you the tags you've used most often and you can quickly select them. Uh, none of these work here. This is not about cookies. So I'm going to add pecan and add pecan because I might have other posts or pages or products that use pecan but not necessarily pecan pie. I might have pecan pecan sandies, cookies. So um, then I could also specify pecan pie. That way if someone is specifically searching for pecan pie, they'll find it other and others tagged with it. Let's see what else. Uh, oh, I might... Um, so I've got a history, and then maybe also I put a recipe in each post. So let's say that I use recipe as a tag. So I've got a few tags. I've got a category. I've got text, headings, picture. I can select preview. what it looks like. There's that caption text that we wrote a moment ago, our secret ingredient. There's the tags. So that's good for this moment. Let's click Publish. And then View Site. So now my home page shows Pie of the Month. And New Location. And notice that the category, I didn't notice it before, now I do, the category is found above the blog post. So this is pie of the month, and that's the name of the title of the, of the post, and then above it is the category. What we had down here, New Chilla Vista Location, announcement. That was part of the category of announcements. So the announcement in this theme is, is a visible above the uh, post. Tags are below it.
All right, so did everyone get their post published? Anyone need a little help? Okay, so let me show you right away something that is going to be very useful to you, especially if you're going to take advantage of blogs. Uh, by default, everything that you write on a blog post will be visible before you click on the, the name of the post. Remember, if you click on the name of the post, you get the option then for a person to be able to comment. What I would like is just a little snippet of the post before on the home page before someone reads the whole thing. And the reason for that is that I've dealt with various clients that they use the blog but then they write a really long blog post and then they write another really long one and another really long one and suddenly their home page just goes on and on and on. I don't want all of my blog content to be visible all at once. I want to entice people with a little snippet and then a button that says read more and then they can see the rest. And again, WordPress makes that really easy to do. Let's go back to edit this pie of the month. So click the edit button, the pencil. And I'm going to say, I want people to just read the part that says pecan pie for October. We're featuring this pie. And I don't want to see them to see anything else in the, until they click more. So I'm going to say I'm going to divide the post right after the first teaser. So click at the end of that before it gets to the H2. We've got a button on the first row, second to last. It looks like a little, uh, a little road with uh, the divider in the middle, but it's insert read more tag. So that will divide your, your posts where you click it so that people will only see that much and then a read more button where they can follow if they wish. It'll help to declutter your home page. So select, click where you want it and then click insert read more. It writes a little special tag for you. And then you want to publish, I'm sorry, you want to update view site, visit site, same blog post as before, but now it shows this teaser, and then continue reading. You see that oftentimes on websites, don't you? This is how you do it, just one button. Yes? You mean like so it looks like that more? Yeah. That's good. Now, now update it and then go visit site and then you'll see the result. I added some subcategories on the category, but mm. they didn't show up in, their, in the subcategory. They showed up in the separate category. Over here, you're saying under categories? Yeah. Hmm. That might depend on the theme, how it displays it, or it might be that even subcategories are visible on the same top category. Um, we have different ways to address that. Um, remind me, we'll look at it again a little later once we start editing categories and such but we should be able to have subcategories under the parent category. Yes? Did you do that heading 1 and heading 2? Is that just giving you the font size, or is that taking that word and putting it somewhere in particular? It's doing two things. Uh, one is it's changing the font size, uh, the styling slightly, 
but it's also giving it the meaning of a, of a hierarchy about dividing up your content into sections. However, it does not show up anywhere else like a, something that we can click on. That's what tags would be for. So if you've got this as a heading two of history, it might be a good idea in your tag actually to put a history tag. So anywhere that, it, that uses history, people can find it once they search for history or click the tag. So if you've got um, you do heading one, you go to heading one again if you want to. You could, but I don't recommend it. I do recommend to divide up your document based on the concept where a heading I the notice the way I did mine. My heading one I used to delineate the teaser. And that's all that I write there. Then I could have a history, and then I could have recipes, and then there I might have H2, H2. But think about like my own syllabus here. There's only one thing in the whole syllabus that is this font, H1. And I've got a couple of spots where it's the same font. They're on the same hierarchical level, H2, H2. So I don't recommend to reuse your H1s. I do recommend to use the hierarchy. But you could have H2 twice if they relate in concept. Mine doesn't display the previous post label. Let's see if I go to the post here. Uh, it says previous post. If I click on previous post, it says next post. Does it say next post, maybe? No, no. Just the name of the post. Yeah, it says next post. Um, you try this. Uh, so if you if you're on the home page. Click on continue reading. And now does it show it at the bottom? Previous yes. post? Okay, so it's only going to show previous post, next post when you're reading a post. When we're on the home page, this is the preview of all of our posts. So that's why there's no, no more posts. But when you're reading a post, if I go to New Chula Vista location, it says, why don't you read the next <coughs> post? So if you click on the continue reading and it I don't know what to say about that. The, it's supposed to, as soon as you add the, as soon as you add this more, it should automatically know to go to continue reading. So when you click the continue reading button, it shows then the the rest of the post. So notice, it's only a little preview of my post. Continue reading. And then it shows me my whole post. All right, so we've got um, we've got a couple of blog posts here. Now I did right here pie of the month for the month of October. We're featuring our famous pecan pie. Let's say that my concept is actually to publish this uh, October post in October, not in September. We can, uh, we can schedule posts because this is a way that if you want to put content out on a regular basis, you could spend one day, Saturday, all day long, and write 10 posts and then schedule them to come out once a month. That way you don't have to struggle the weekend before the end of the month to do your post. Get them all done on one day, set them to publish, and they'll publish on a schedule. So let's say this post actually we want it to be published on October 1st. So let's go back to edit the post. This works after you've published. Actually, it might work before, but we'll check. After I've published it on the right side now, it's got a few things here. Status has been published. Other options that we have here are pending review or draft. This is how we can sort of hide a post or a page. Let's say we no longer need it to be visible to people. I'm not going to delete it. What I could do is put it on draft mode, and then people will no longer see it. Pending review is sort of like it, but a reviewer would go in and approve it. Visibility currently public. We have password protected or private. If we set it to private, 
no one will see it unless they have the link. So it'll exist, but unless you have the link, you won't find it. Password protected is very cool because I could have a password for people to first type to be able to see it. They'll see it on the home page and they'll click to read more, but then it'll say type a password. So here's one possible way, way where you control you can control access to your uh, blog via passwords. You could sell access. That's a it takes more effort to set that up, but I'm showing you here we can put passwords to be able to read the post in public. Stick this post to the front page. So if I'm pub publishing on a regular basis, uh, you'll notice that your latest blog post precedes your, early, your older ones. The newer one pushes the older ones down. That's the nature of a blog. The newer post uh, pushes the older one down. If you need a particular post always visible at the top, if people are always asking you what, uh, what, what's your favorite uh, ingredient, you make a blog post and you click stick to front page and it'll always be the first one so people stop asking you, hopefully. Those are visibility options. Revisions, we'll talk a little bit more in detail, but, but in short, WordPress remembers every change that you made. So if you want to go back to a change you made a week ago, it's still saved, and you can retrieve that change. So it's like a super undo, but we'll look at it later. Published on. Let's check that one out. Click Edit. And here, we can uh, set a date in the past or the future. If for whatever reason we wanted to put a, uh, a post about our, we've been open one year and we forgot to put it because we were busy, but then we remembered to, to publish it, but we want it to be linked to the day that we, that is our anniversary, we can go back and say, actually, this was published on September 1st at uh, 11 a.m. It's 24-hour time, so you have to think in 24-hour time. And then it'll be back published to that point. Is it better if it says 1754, but it's not 1754? Yes, because that is the time. 1754 is 554 p.m. So it's under it's under 24 hour time. No, here in California, it's a 24 hour time. You have to think about it in 24 hour time. So if you 17. Five fifty-four. Okay, yeah. I need to practice my twenty-four hour times. So does that matter if you're worried about comments? You know what? That's a good point. Yes, I'll, I'll I'll look at that a little bit later. Our default WordPress is set to the wrong time zone. It's set to UTC. Uh, so remind me about that. We'll fix our time zone. It's on the wrong time zone. Did that? Just a moment. Did it answer your question? Yes. Okay. Yes. Question. September 1st. It's 09, it's September, zero, and then 01, September 1st. Yeah, so this will move it back to September 1st. This can also move it forward. That's what I want. I want this to be published on October, right? 10, October 1st. At, let's say I work really hard and I publish this at 6 in the morning. The time zone's wrong, which we'll fix in a moment, but it'll publish at 6 in the morning Pacific time once we set the time zone. So we can backdate and future date a post. So again, we can spend Saturday writing five posts, so then I'll have five posts for the next five months, and set it to be published at every first day of the month. Yes. It'll all work automatically. It'll automatically, as soon as I click OK and update, I'll show you what happens. Okay. It'll get removed from today. It'll cease to exist until October 1st. Yeah. So let's put October 1st, 6 in the morning if you want. Click OK, and then notice the button changes to Schedule. 
you're going to schedule it until that time. So what's going to happen is it's going to remove itself right now from the home page, and it'll wait. It'll lie in wait until October 1st, 5.59 in the morning, and at 6 in the morning, publish. It'll publish itself. And to prove that, you can go back to the visit site, and only the last one that has been published will be visible. Yes. If you wanted to make several of those monthlies, then basically the title changes and the picture changes. Um, can you duplicate? Is there a way to duplicate a post? Let me double check that. That's an often requested um, feature for WordPress. I know that there's plugins that will do that. Oh, I'm okay. not sure if the if this current version does it. Let me check. Oh, posts. I'm going to select that and uh, edit move trash. No, because I want to know the answer to... I don't seem to see a duplicate post button, but I know that there are plugins, which we'll talk about plugins in detail. There's a plugin that will do that for you. Maybe in the 4.0, I haven't tested it, WordPress 4.0. I haven't tested it. Maybe they finally added that feature, duplicating posts. All right, so now my home page only has one thing, and it'll update itself on October 1st. Let's fix that time zone issue, and then we'll do other things. Um, the default time zone, because it doesn't know where you're installing it at, I guess, is it, it puts it in, a, in Greenwich Mean Time, which is where? London, England. We're not in London at the moment. so. We need to change that. Let's uh, let's go back to uh, dashboard. If you're not on dashboard, let's go to dashboard and then let's go down to settings general. So in your dashboard, go to your settings and then general. And at the bottom, there it is. Time zone, UTC. You can either change this to UTC negative eight but that doesn't account for daylight saving time. So I would select Los Angeles. You can click on that drop down and start typing LOS because there's a bunch of cities. Click the, click the little box and type LOS and it'll jump you to Los Angeles, hopefully. So switch your time zone to Los Angeles and then save changes. All right, that's something we need to remember when we first set up WordPress. It might not be on the right time zone. So we've published a, um, a, a post and we've scheduled one. And so now what we'll do, now what we'll do is we will, uh, let's edit some of, our, uh, some of our categories, some of our categories and some of our tags because maybe we have a misspelling or maybe we don't need tags or, or that sort of thing. So let's see where we can edit that. Go over to Posts. Let's go to Posts, and then let's go to Categories. You can go to Post Categories or Post Tags, and this is a list of all of your posts and categories. You can create new ones here. And on the right side, you've got a list of, okay, I've got announcements. And one post has been published that has announcements. I've got pie of the month, which has not been published yet, so it says zero. But uh, if I misspelled announcements, I can hover over any of these 
uh, categories and select edit. Once we go to edit, here's the name. You're going to see this term a few times, slug. The slug is the URL-friendly version of the name. It usually is all lowercase and contains only letters, numbers, and hyphens. That means that if my category was called the announcements, the slug would need to be the dash announcements, lowercase. Now the slug often fills itself in. When you write the category, it automatically writes the slug for you. But if you need to change that, that's what you need to be aware of. That if my category is now the announcements, the slug needs to be the dash announcements, no spaces, and lowercase. We can put hierarchies with parents. Categories, unlike tags, can have a hierarchy. You might have a jazz category, and under that have children categories of bebop and big band, which is optional. So again, I might have a category of uh, pies, and then under pies I've got, um, you know, um, let's say regions. Southern pies, northern pies, western pies, eastern pies. They're all pies. Description. The description is not prominent by default, however, some themes may show it. So if a person says, show me all categories, there may be a description that shows up when they're on that screen. I'm not going to make any changes here, actually, so I'll just go back to categories. So categories is where we would edit existing categories or create categories. So if I wanted a new one, I could type it here. The slug will usually type itself. Is it part of a parent? Does it have a description? And then add. I kind of like doing this better uh, on the post itself because I might not have an idea what categories I'm creating until I start to create content. Or I might take a moment after kind of uh, making notes and writing about, well, every month I'm going to write a, uh, a feature on my employees. And I'm going to write about Janet, and I'm going to write about Bill. Oh, Janet's really good at uh, pastries. So I start to de develop what kind of categories I'll be using. I could create them before I create my posts or pages or afterward. So if I wanted to edit my tags, where do you think I would go? I think I heard someone say tags. So same thing, tags. It'll show you your most popular ones. You can create them. Here it'll show you the tags, the slug, what, how many posts use them. It's not going to show you unpublished posts. It should, but it doesn't. Alright, so posts. The default behavior is that they show up on the home page in a chronological order. Let's talk now about uh, pages. Before that, any, any questions so far on anything? Yes? In your categories, how do you uh, change the lineup as far as how they appear? On your... they, they're alphabetical, so uh, in this screen it's going to show them alphabetically. Uh, but when you're when you've got them uh, on the actual post, they also appear alphabetically. If you want to edit that, you'll probably have to edit some code. It's not that easy. The default is alphabetical. I think it's most useful there because if you've got a lot of tags, people want to find something in a certain letter. They should think to go to that letter alphabetically. I'm sorry. I mean, as far as your uh, tags, your uh, categories. Well, um, if I'm looking at categories on this screen, it, it, uh, it is alphabetical, but if I'm looking at them, and I don't have others to show here just yet, but remember when you're here, your, your category will show up above the, the post. There's no way to organize that. But I believe when you've got categories here, they'll be alphabetical as well. Okay. All right, so posts. Now let's contrast this with pages. Pages are 
screens that will not change on a regular basis, like the About page, the Contact page. So under the dashboard or wherever, we have the option at the top, New Page. Let's select New Page. And you have to think about what are the screens that people will often want to, to visit. Uh, so in my case, uh, I want people to go to an About Us screen to read about the history of our, of, of our business. So maybe I'll, I'll call it history, or whatever you'd like. About, about me, about us, history. Let me call this history. Say, um, a San Diego tradition. This one uh, has no point to use a more tag because it's a page. When you view it, it's going to be the whole page. There's no need to break it up into multiple pages. So I'm going to write something here and I'm going to set it as a heading. And write a paragraph. Founded in 1880. Victor's Bakery has been around, has been on a mission to serve the best. Blah blah blah. And again, however you want to work with this, um, do team members, Victor, heading two. Let's say I could do this, Victor, Patricia, Denise, Sharna. So if the rest of PMD Interactive sees this, they'll see that they've been promoted to bakers. What I can do then is uh, set these as, as different headings. Heading 3, for example. And then within these sections, add content. So forth. So I'm going to preview. That's how it looks like. You don't have to fill out what I've got, but just as an example, notice why I would want to use headings and such. This H1 gives some sort of maybe uh, something that sets the tone for the page, some sort of catchphrase, slogan, etc. Then I've got a plain paragraph. Then I've got a section for team members, so that's an H2. Each team member has its own section with an H3 and then text. I could be adding pictures and such, etc. So don't worry about filling in the details, but other things that we have now, this is something that we do not have in posts. If you look on the right side, now we have something called page attributes under parent and template and order. This was not available for posts. Posts had, uh, I believe you can set standard, aside, gallery, that sort of thing. Those are sort of like templates that change the design of a post. Then we have a literal template here. 
a literal template in that it says template default or contributor page or full width page. And this again will depend on your theme. Sometimes a theme, a theme is designed that it will have a completely different layout comp compared to your other pages. There might be a theme that is called about us page and what that does is it, acts, it actually then accesses a Google map. Um, this particular theme just has default contributor full width. To see what that actually means, I would click on one and do preview and see how it changes. I'm interested. What does the contributor page look like compared to the default? So I can preview it. Hmm. Okay. The contributor page merely shows who wrote this article, this post, with one article. Full width page. I would have assumed remove the sidebar, but it didn't. But again, depends on the theme. Some have many themes, especially premium themes, because the question came up last time. What if I want this screen to look a certain way and this other screen to look a different way? The theme authors might have envisioned that, and they might have known, OK, for many pages, you'll have a sidebar on the left, content on the right. Sometimes people will want the sidebar on the right and the content on the left, so we can select under the template, right sidebar, for example. Sometimes we don't want any sidebar. So there might be a template that says no sidebar. It depends on the theme. Parent. Uh, this is also for hierarchy um, of organization and such. Eventually when we get to products, we're going to have um, a products page, a checkout page, a shopping cart page. Those shopping cart and checkout pages are our child pages of the shopping cart page. Those sub pages um, are related to that parent page. So we can set up hierarchies here. We don't need it at the moment. But you can simply select an existing page to link this current page to. Order, don't worry about that at the moment. And I'm going to select to publish. So publish the page and visit the site. And I publish my page, but it doesn't show up on the home page. Well, it won't. It's not a post. It's a page. It'll show up in your menu bar. You notice there's a menu bar up there. There's a new page there. So I've got a history page. There it is. Oh, and I had a sample page. What does that look like? All right, so did everyone get their history page published? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we've got a history page, a sample page. We'll make a couple more pages, um, edit pages and such. This is the other aspect of WordPress. This is great once we have a live site, but I don't know that it doesn't work on that. So we need to 
because it's here. Well, you've already published it one time, and now what you want to do is update it. So now go back to this site and you'll see this. By default, all posts automatically go here. All your posts will go here first, then all your page will go on the menu. We will talk about instead to have this page take over the front page. Okay. Okay. Because you continue reading. When you click continue reading, it should have a whole post. Now that you click on the post, you're going to post. Thank you. 
All right, everyone. So we've got a page. Let's say, um, let's say I want a new page for a contact form. Um, so let's uh, let's click to add. Um, let's click to add a new on top here, new uh, page. New page, and this time we'll call it contact. Top here will be contact. And we can say, uh, visit us at, and then make up an address. One, two, three, fake street. And make up a phone number and an email. So this is just a very simple contact page. Uh, I want a form that someone fills in and sends me an email. Now, out of the box, WordPress does not have that built in uh, in order for people to send you an, an email. Because again, when I was doing classic websites in, in, in Dreamweaver, people wanted that. How do you make someone how do you make how do you make it so people can send me an email? And it required kind of a lot of programming, not in HTML, in something else like JavaScript or most likely PHP, some other language. So still, out of the box, uh, WordPress does not have that. But when we get to the point where we're talking about plugins, we can download a plugin that'll do that. That you just drag and drop and say, I want these boxes here, publish. But what's going on behind the scenes of something so simple is something not simple. So at the moment, we can't really create a contact form yet. We will a little later. I think this will be enough just for this uh, contact page. I'm not going to really edit anything. I could add a link and that, whatever, but I just want something for a contact page. Let's publish. Visit site. And now notice it's at the top here on the menu bar. So by default, every time I create a new page, it automatically adds itself to the menu bar. That's pretty useful. If I was doing this in Dreamweaver, I'd have to go in to all of my code and change the nav bar on every page. Pretty convenient, but a couple of drawbacks. One is it'll put every new page up on the menu bar. Sometimes I create a page that I don't want people to see like a landing page. If you know anything about uh, SEO or social media or search engine marketing, you know about the concept of a landing page. Basically, a landing page is, let's say, I print out coupons. And I say, uh, for 10% off, visit this link. 
and the only way to get to that link is via this coupon. So people have followed the link and landed on a specific page not found anywhere else via the menus, but only found in a specific way. This is how social media, uh, social media marketers can see if their content is effective. Are people following that link to go to this landing page? If not, we need to figure out a better way to do it. So the point is, I, I, sometimes I'm going to create pages, but I don't want them to show up on the menu bar. The default behavior is they will automatically show up in the, de in the menu bar. So we'll deal with that in a moment. The other default behavior is that it's alphabetical. In my case, maybe that's what I want, but actually maybe I want the history to be the first thing, the contact to be the second thing, and sample to be removed. So we'll deal with that right now. We can edit our menus. The default works pretty well, but here's the more power user way. Let's go back to the dashboard. Let's go to Appearance section, and then Menus. There's a whole section on working with your menus. So back in the dashboard under Appearance, Menus. So this screen looks maybe a little complicated, but basically we have a few things to do. We can have multiple menus. Let's say during different times of the year, we have different uh, seasonal uh, pastries. During October, everything's pumpkin spiced. So we could have a menu item for the month of October that says Halloween on the menu. But we don't need that Halloween item any other time throughout the year. So we can create different menus and activate them when we need them. So first we need a menu here. We'll call this main menu. Menu name, men, men, main menu. And then on the right side, create menu. Menu structure. Add menu items from the column on the left. The left here will show us all of our pages, the most recent pages, for example. Let's switch to view all instead. View all will uh, we'll show you every page that currently exists. If you've got a lot of pages, you might need to go to search. But under View All, I want to add all of these items to my menu, except the sample page. I want a Home button, so I'll select it. I want a Contact button, I want a History button, but not a sample page. Select those three, and then Add to Menu. So then this shows me, I'm about to have a menu at the top, from left to right, Home Contact History. Well, actually, I want Home History Contact. I want Contact, the last item on the right. So it's a matter of drag and drop. So you can click History and drag it above. But be careful here, because if you're dragging it and it's indented, it'll become a sub-menu item. Make sure it's same level like that. I'll show you the difference in a moment. But if it's indented like that, that will mean that when you hover over home, it'll drop down to show you history. So here's how we can create drop-down menus pretty easily. We'll do that in a little while later. But make sure that this one is out. Sometimes it's finicky. There it is. Out there. Now they're all on the same top level. Home history contact. We've created the menu. We've got options down here. Automatically add new top-level pages to this menu. That's the behavior that was the default, that as soon as you create a new page, add it to the menu. And notice now it's off. So I will not have a new page when I create it. If you do want that, you can turn it on. And then very important, we've created a menu, but we haven't added it anywhere to our page. Depending on our theme, theme location, where should we show it? Top primary, secondary menu in left sidebar. And oftentimes these are not very descriptive. Where exactly are you going to put it? Oftentimes what you have to see is you have to activate it 
let's select top primary menu, menu, save menu, visit site. Oftentimes you have to select the place, save it and visit it and see, okay, now I know where it's ending up, wrong place. So I come back here and say, actually, I wanted it in the secondary and put it there. And actually, I can put the menu most of the times in more than one place. So if my theme has three different menu areas, I could have that menu in those three areas if I turn them all on. In our case, usually something will be called primary and secondary. Sometimes the theme designer calls it top menu, side menu, but then you don't know is it left side, right side. You have to experiment a bit. I'm going to select top primary menu, save menu, visit site, there it is, home, history, contact. I click on history and it's on the history page, contact, home, Next to the magnifying glass, have you tried clicking it? You've got a search that's dependent on the, on the theme. You've also got search on the left side. Home history, contact. Let's say I also want a, 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 a menu item up there, a nav bar item, uh, so that people can, uh, can go to my Facebook page. Um, so let's look at let's look at that. Um, scroll over the name and notice uh, shortcut here. Directly back to menus. So scroll over the your your site name and let's go to menus. I want it so that when you hover your mouse over contact, I get a drop-down menu that lists my social media sites, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, etc. Now, I don't have any page where I have that. I want people to go directly to Facebook when they click that link. So I'm actually going to need to, instead of adding a page, I'm going to add a link. Click on link. It says, okay, type the address, type what text you want to appear on the menu, and then add to menu. So let's make this up. Facebook.com slash PMD Interactive. Menu item. Visit Facebook. So you need to type an address. You need to know what the address is. Type whatever link text you want, and then add menu. It gets added at the bottom. But actually, I want to drag it so that it's indented below contact. And it should then say, this is a sub-item. It's a drop-down menu. Don't forget to save the menu before you visit site. You just drag it. You want to drag it and make sure that it's indented. And so if I save... What's that? Just a moment. Let me show it live and then, and then I'll do it. So if I go back to visit site and then I roll over, oh, look at that, I've got a little triangle there that gives me right away a preview that there's a drop down. And when I roll over, visit Facebook. And when I click on it, it goes to my company's Facebook. I need to go back. Let me go back there. So menus. So which part are which part should I show again? Mm -hmm. 
Well, let me go see this because I don't I don't know what you're saying. So uh, once you drag that over there, you can practice now. Try the try to add a Twitter or a Pinterest or some other link, just like I've got it. Is it when you're trying to do more than one sublink to line them up together? So this is where I get stuck. Oh, I think that time it did it. Okay. Yeah, it's just I that wasn't it's able to do it before. Yeah, it's very easily to put it like that. Now it's a submenu of a submenu. Okay. So it's just like to kind of apply where it snaps into the same hierarchy. Okay. All right, so um, we were we were creating this menu structure. Um, did you notice that when you click on that Facebook link, it goes to Facebook? But then the problem is that if someone goes to Facebook and does their thing there and then closes the window, they've lost your original site. So let's talk about instead opening Facebook in a separate tab or separate window. Now here's the part where we see, well, WordPress is very powerful, and there's a lot that we can do with it. So actually, many things are hidden until you need them. What I need is so that this Facebook link opens in a separate window. So notice, if you click the, the little triangle on any of these, you get extra options. For, for Facebook, if you click on the triangle next to it, you get some options. So if you misspell the address or you want the navigation label to be different, you can change that. Title attribute is when you put your mouse over a link, a little pop-up happens. You can change that if you want. But here, there's going to be an option to change it to open to its own window. However, it's not active. It's an extra option. It's an extra, extra option. So here's the thing. Let me show you this and then we'll do it. Every screen has at the top right screen options. If I go to screen options and turn on here link target, then I get the option down here to do what I want. Let me show you that again. Let's all go look at screen options at the top. Every screen has stuff that it doesn't even show you. For example here it's showing me links, categories, and pages but it's not showing me other things like tags, link targets, etc. Question? Twelve thirty? Was the class or eleven thirty? Uh, this class starts at nine o'clock. Oh, okay, but you have one at twelve thirty, right? Not on Friday. Uh, what class are you looking for? Oh, uh, I think WordPress. I think I confused it with another class. Yeah, this class is. Uh, Can I stay for a little bit? Sure. Have, have, have a seat. Right so what we've got here is link target. Is the is the thing that we're missing. So turn on link target. And now we get a little bit extra if you scroll down. 
That's what we want. Open link in new window. That was not there a, a moment ago. Because there's so many options, so many features of WordPress, everything is not active. So your your part of your homework is is to start looking at screen options. What's in what's hidden on these screens? Once in a while we'll have to activate something that is not visible. But in our case, after we turn on open link in new tab, new window, save menu, and visit site. Um, and you go then to the face visit Facebook, notice it opened in a new tab. So now people can spend their time over on Facebook, give the page a like, close that tab, they're still on our page. Otherwise they wouldn't be able to get back to unless they did it back at it. Exactly, unless they did back 20 times, because once you get into Facebook, you're probably going to click on 30 things. So with a with that little target option, then it opens in a different tab. Just one moment. So actually what I'm going to do, what we need to do, uh, we're getting close to the end of the day, so I want to talk about... I don't want to have to start from scratch again next time. Do you? I want to start from this point next time. I want to take it from here and then go on forward. So let me show what I want to show here, then we'll have lab time to help people individually. What I want to do is on my sheet number four, we're going to do sheet number four. sheet number four, I've got the step-by-step -step instructions that we're going to do right now so that we save our work and that we don't start over next time. Archiving WordPress with Duplicator. In general, we're going to download a plugin. This plugin gives extra capabilities to WordPress. Out of the box, it can do a lot, but it cannot easily save itself to transfer from computer to computer because this assumes you're saving it on the, in the cloud, on an actual server. We're not. We're working on our computers here. So I've got the steps here. We're going to download this plugin, Duplicator. We're going to activate it. We're going to run it. And then we're going to download our whole today's project into two little files. And when we come back next time, we'll do the part that says resurrecting your site, where we bring it back from where we archived it. So uh, first thing is, let's go here to our dashboard. And we'll go over to the plugins section. Got a couple plugins installed. We'll deal with more plugins later. But under the plugins screen, uh, we're going to select at the top Add New Plugin. Be careful there. Make sure it's Add a New Plugin right there. And there's thousands of plugins to choose from, like that contact form that we'll look at later. But the one we want at the moment is called Duplicator. Let's type duplicator and then search. You should have a variety of plugins that show up here. In my case, it shows 843 of them right there. Well, how do I know what a good one is? Uh, one way is to look at the star ratings. This one's called Post Duplicator. That was a question earlier. How can I duplicate a post so I don't have to start over? Apparently there's a Post Duplicator. And then there's another one over here. Duplicate Menu, etc., etc. Plagiarism, what's that? Plagiarism keeps you from being penalized by Google to inadvertent duplicate content. 
All right, so there's many plugins. There's star ratings. You probably want to assume that a higher star rating is a better plugin, but there's a lot of plugins that have five stars. So how do you know that the one I'm talking about is actually the best one? Notice this says multi-site clone duplicator and duplicator. They both have five stars. Which one's better? Uh, the short answer is the one that I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> but the other answer is, if you, if I'm not around to tell you, if you hover over a star rating, it'll tell you how many ratings it has. So multi-clone duplicator has two ratings. So the author and their mom gave it a five stars. Duplicator, the one I'm saying, has 704. Okay, so possibly that's a good plugin. So that's one way to figure out what the good plugin is. Duplicator, there's many plugins to duplicate your site, to archive your site, to transfer your site from one server to another, one computer to another, many of them. This one is the one I've used. I like it. It's free. It does what I need. It's a little more technical, perhaps, than you might want to, than, than you might care for. There's other ones. I think it's called Backup Buddy. That one, I think, can uh, do things a little bit more streamlined, but uh, some of them are free. Some of them are not. Some of them are what is known as a freemium, which is they give you 95% of it, and it works, and then the last 5% you might need to pay for. Some might be you never pay for it at all, you use it completely for free, but then eventually maybe you give the author $5 uh, for, for, a good, for, for good work. You know? So Duplicator plugin is a freemium. It works totally free for everything we're going to need. You never have to pay. Maybe a certain point after you've made a little bit of money on your site and figured out, well, that was a good product, it's really saved me several times, I'll pay $20 for it. But anyway, Duplicator is the one we want. Uh, make sure it says here it's from Life in the Grid. That's the author, and that should be listed on my document. Right here, search for Duplicator. You'll find one. Make sure it's from Life in the Grid. When I wrote this, it was version 056, and it's still 056. So select Install Now. It says, are you sure you want to install? Okay. It's going to connect with the WordPress uh, duplicate, uh, the WordPress plugin directory, download it, install it, and then it should say successfully installed. But remember to click activate plugin because you can have many plugins. They don't need to be in, they don't need to be active. Uh, you can have a plugin that deals with uh, let's say chat tech support, but you don't want to turn it on today. You're you're busy, so. Make sure you activate the plugin. And now we get a brand new section in WordPress right here, Duplicator. This was not here before. So plugins extend the capabilities of WordPress. A plugin could be installed into the side menu here. Sometimes the plugin installs itself into the settings screen. So sometimes you have to hunt for it a little bit. But anyway, if you see duplicator in the menu, click it. It's pretty straightforward. It's in my instructions here, of course. Next step. After we've, uh, okay, now you have a new dashboard item duplicator, click it. Click the Create New tab at the top. All right, so at the top here, this is going to list all of the packages. This is going to list all of the times we've archived the site. This is a very cool plugin because we can save an exact snapshot of our project at this point. And let's say we do a bunch of changes and something really, really messes up. We can go back to that previous snapshot. Um, I can, we can use this as what we're going to do right now, where we're going to save our project as a package and then take it home with us. And then if you continue to follow the steps, you can resurrect the project at home. So you can take what we've done here and keep working on it at home. Or when we come back next week, we will resurrect our site uh, next week. We'll need to first create a package. So create new at the top here. Uh, it should say requirements pass. It'll scan the server briefly to see if everything's set up right. I get a pass. If you don't get a pass, I'll help you in a moment but it gives it a name, today's date, 
2014-9-12, and the name of your site. You can change that if you want, but I recommend leave the name because it tells you the name of your site and the date that you made it. Purpose of this package. Any notes that you want. When you've got six of them, what, why did I save this package? So make a note here. Uh, this is, um, I don't know, we could say basic WordPress site to posts to pages a menu a custom menu bar whatever you want to write that gives you a quick description of what this site has <coughs> it's optional so uh, the name I've got the name I've got some notes at the bottom right Click Next. It's going to scan things again. Scans, notice it says, scan checks are not required to pass, however they could cause issues on some systems. Mine says everything looks good. Sometimes where you might get a warning is large file sizes. If you're uploading your, your your product photos straight from your digital camera, you're probably going to get this warning. It's saying you're uploading your high quality 12 megapixel photos. Uh, this archive, this, this duplicator tool is going to take everything in the project and shrink it down to one file. And so when you've got these really big files, it may slow things down. And depending on the server, that slowdown may be interpreted as a, as a failure and then the archive doesn't, doesn't work. So if there's any of these that say fail or warning, you want to click and it'll ho hopefully give you a little bit of a clue of what to do. All of mine say good. I'm happy about that. It shows that my whole site is going to be at the moment about 18 megabytes. So if you brought a flash drive today, you should have 18 megabytes or so. I'm going to click build. It's going to take a moment, depending how complicated your site is. It might take a while or not. Mine took 3.6 seconds. Inst the package is completed. Now I've got two files. These are the two I'm going to take home. And what I'm going to do when I'm done with this, I'm going to save my project in the network folder so that when you come back next week and if you forgot to bring your project, you can use my project. Or if you want to start from my project, you can use my project. I'll set that up in a moment. But what this says is, okay, you have these two files. You have this installer file and this archive file. Everything actually shrunk down to 7 megabytes. So what you want to do, as per my instructions, what do we have here? Notes, leave the other folder, scan complete. After the build is complete, you will have two files, an installer and an archive. Click to download the installer and the archive file. One is called installer.php and contains the instructions to resurrect your site. The other might be called 2014 whatever whatever zip and contains all the media, pages, posts, database, everything. Do not unzip that file. So what I'm saying here is click installer and then you should get, uh, do you want to open it or save it? You want to save it. If it asks you, you want to save. If it just saved it, then it probably went to the desktop. I want to click Save. Uh, Firefox up here told me it downloaded. And then you want to click the Archive. Same thing, you want to save it. <coughs> Firefox told me it downloaded up there. Uh, I believe these save to the desktop, so go to your desktop. So go to your desktop. What's that? Installer.php. Installer.php. Well, here's, here it is right here. Here's mine. 
Yeah, so on your desktop, then you should see installer.php and then a zip file, a little f folder with a, with a zipper on it. Uh, that is the whole site itself. Everything in your media folder, everything in your posts, pages, menus, and the database. That's why last time we couldn't just drag the folder to our zip, to our flash drive and leave, because that wouldn't have given us a copy of the database. The database existed elsewhere. So these two files, that's what you want to save on your flash drive. So I took these two files, installer PHP and the, and the zip file. I put them into my flash drive, and now I can take them home with it. When we come back next time, we will do the next part of this handout, which is to resurrect it. We're going to basically run this installer file, and it'll bring back the snapshot. It'll unfreeze what we did exactly as we left it at this point. So for us, this is great because now we won't have to start over. We can take the project back and forth. And then for me, as I do this stuff for real clients, the way I do this is I'm working on their site on a separate server, or on my server, I work on it, I, I get it complete, I make this package, and then I make it live on their site, and now the site is updated and new and ready to, ready to go. We'll do that next time together. Um, make sure you copy those two files to your flash drive. When we come back next week, I'm going to show you uh, that in our network folder, uh, my project is in there. So next week I'll give it to you. If you want it today, ask me before you leave. But now it's saved. We're going to have lab time for a little bit. What you want to do is make sure that you've uh, printed your name on the sign-in sheet. And if you are new today, make sure you enroll into the class. Add code. If you have any, um, if you have any uh, doubts about that, see me. <coughs> so thank you for coming, and uh, we'll do a little lab time. And we'll come back next time and keep going. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Save the file.